you know, what a, what a pain in the neck. I was sort of horrified. I didn't really, you know, understand what was happening. Disgusting with me. Seven. My father and... I think it's the natural purification of the body. Well, it used to bother me when I was a teenager and a young girl. And mostly I think it bothered me because people sort of expected it to bother me a lot. So it did, and I had cramps. And later on, um, now it, it doesn't bother me. My name is Judy Marston, 38, 25, 36. Even though I may look like Miss Universe, up until today, I had one big problem. <clears throat> I repeat, I had one big problem. I was 15 years old and had never gotten my period. Even though my mother had told me that women get their periods between the ages of 8 and 17, I was still unhappy that I hadn't gotten mine. This morning, that all changed. My name is Johnny Stanton. For me, it all started when I went bowling with Judy today. I should have known something was different as soon as she got a strike. She's usually such a rotten bowler. Johnny, do you notice anything different about me today? No. Are you sure? You got rouge on? So what's so different about you? I got my first period today. So what? So what? It's only the first time I've ever gotten it, that's all. I'm 15 years old. So what's the big deal? It means that blood is flowing out of my uterus. What Judy has just told Johnny is the type of oversimplification that can be easily misunderstood, especially if you get your information on street corners. Yes, it's true that women have menstrual periods, and yes, there is an outflow of blood from the uterus. But what does this mean, and why does it happen? Let's take a closer look as Judy and Johnny learn more about what menstruation means. Nothing much good on. how it all happened. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. You know how sometimes you call me Franny and my real name is Francine? Yeah. Well, sometimes I call this an egg cell and its real name is ovum. That's because the egg cell comes from an ovary. Every woman has two ovaries, just as every man has two testes. The egg comes out of the ovaries and the sperm comes out of the testes and they meet in the female body in the fallopian tube. What, are you trying to confuse me or something? Now, Lola, look at me. See my head, see my body? They're connected by my neck. See the ovary? See the uterus? They're connected by the fallopian tube. The fallopian tube is just another passageway in the body. 
I get it. Fallopian tube is just another passageway in the body. Right, except there are two of them, one for each ovary. Right. Now, once a month, the pituitary gland notifies one egg cell to mature, break out of one of the ovaries, and travel through the fallopian tube to the uterus. If the egg cell gets to the uterus without being fertilized, the lining of blood and tissue there that would house this growing egg cell is not needed. So the egg and the lining disintegrate and flow out of the body through the vagina. That's called menstruation. Menstru what? Menstruation. What a funny word. Yes, it is, but it makes a lot of sense. It does? Sure. Menstruation comes from the Latin word menses, which means monthly. Oh, yeah. Why does that make sense? Because monthly, this lining of blood and tissue builds up to receive the egg that monthly breaks out of the ovary. You mean that every month a new baby could start growing there? No, Lola. Usually, when one egg cell is fertilized, the lining won't dissolve, and the body doesn't notify the ovaries to release any more eggs. I see. There's just one thing I don't understand, Francine. How does the sperm get into the fallopian tube so it can meet the egg? Well, Lola, that happens as a result of sexual intercourse when no form of contraception is used. Then the woman can become pregnant. Now, by using birth control, every woman can make her own decision when to have children. So unless a woman is pregnant, she should get her period every month. I don't know, Francine. You're awful smart. Joanne Johnson was on the streets today, continuing her inquest of hygiene in the city. Today's topic, menstruation. Joanne? I'm here on the street, stopping people at random, asking them their feelings about a very important yet personal subject. Yeah, very much aware of when I'm going to get it. How? Um, by physical symptoms. Like what? Bloating. Um, and I usually, the day before, get rather tense and feel irritable. I had terrible belly aches. The night before, I got super hungry and compulsively nervous. It'd be kind of messy, I imagine. Messy. I am being in big in hips. I didn't get mine until I was 14. And I was the last one in the crowd to get it. And I was also very underdeveloped and small. So I felt like a child, and I didn't feel like a woman until I got my period. I got my period about the time most of my friends were, which was 13. And it didn't symbolize anything to me about being a woman. It was just like another thing to cope with. But I generally have terrible cramps, or I had terrible cramps. I found that if I did exercises, that this would kind of ease the cramps. You lie back, and you raise your legs. kind of lower them slowly to the ground. I flow very heavily, and I can use two tampons at once when one napkin wouldn't be effective at all. And, how uh, well, you put, they actually fit in side by side, and if you put one in and just hold the string, and then insert the other one just gently, it'll, it'll fit in beside it. You're really lucky that you can use tampons at this age, because when I was younger, they used to believe that you could only use a tampon if you weren't a virgin. But I think most mothers have that idea because tampons haven't been around for that long, really. Well, the trouble with this diagram is that it shows a standing figure. And I think when you're first starting, it's much easier to put one in when you're sitting down. The hardest thing to do is to find where to put it because the vagina is located in the middle. It's not seen on the surface. So what you have to do is spread the outer skin apart and maybe even use one of your fingers and feel where the entrance to it is. You take the tampon, insert the first segment of the applicator, you hold on to the rim, and then you push this down, and then you remove the applicator. And you don't have to worry about losing a tampon because the cervix prevents it from going very far. So you just should be able to find it with your fingers. And sometimes tampons don't come with an applicator. Just put the tampon itself in, maybe even lubricate the tip to make it go in more easily. Wouldn't you know it, I finally get my brother's car to go to the beach and it starts to rain. Not only that, Judy disappears off to her new home, the bathroom.
and I get stuck lugging all this stuff to the shelter. I can't understand it. The weather report said warm and sunny. I wanted to go swimming. Well, you can't go swimming. You're having your period. I can, too. Just because I'm having my period doesn't mean I have to stop doing everything. Do you think your period could have caused the rain? Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Leslie J. Beard. My name is Leslie J. Beard. My name is Leslie J. Beard. Panel, if you'll follow along with me, please, as I read the affidavit you have before you. I, Leslie Jansen Beard, world-famous socio-anthropologist, have been studying the origins and customs of menstrual taboos the world over for the past 15 years. It was on my renowned trip to the Australian bush country last year that I discovered the connection between an ancient menstrual fear and the fear we have today of walking under a ladder. Signed, Leslie Jansen Beard. All right, panel. We'll begin our questioning with John Stanton. John? Number one, is it true that meat spoils in the presence of a menstruating woman? Yes, that's true. Number two, do you agree? Wine spoils. Number one, where did the term the curse originate? I think it's an old Anglo-Saxon term. <coughs> Let's move on to Eileen Funnel. Thank you, Bob. Number three, how are menstruating women treated as a general rule in most primitive cultures? They were isolated from the villages and made to live in menstrual huts on the outskirts of the settlements. Thank you, Eileen. And now on to Mitchell Barker. Mitch! Hi, Bob. Uh, number three, what were the men afraid of? They were afraid that these women possessed evil powers that would sap their vitality. And on to Judy Marston. Thank you. Uh, number three, who started all these myths and taboos? Back in matriarchal societies, women would make up scary stories so that little boys and men would leave them alone during it. Number two. Well, women always start everything. I have more questions to ask. We'll have a chance to talk with the contestants after the vote. Mark your ballot. Prepare to determine who is the real Leslie Jansen Beard. Now, here's a pad that has adhesive on the back of it, you see? Mm -hmm. And it sticks to your panties and you don't need a sanitary belt. It comes in two sizes, regular and miniature. And here's just a regular pad, but this one is flushable and comes in super and regular sizes. And this kind is narrower and it tapers and it has this discreet blue disposable bag that goes with it. Bright blue is discreet. Here's a super pad that has a pad with inner pad for extra absorbency. I think I was more interested in a tampon. Well, we've got cardboard applicators, plastic applicators, and stick applicators. And then there's this kind that has no applicator at all. Okay, I'll take a box of those. Okay. A dollar forty-nine. Hello. What you doing? Can I help you, sir? Well, I, I don't see what I want. I'll uh, just look around, you know?
That'll be a dollar and eighty-nine cents, sir. They're for my mother. I didn't think they were for you. Gee, I'm sorry. We're all out of the large bag. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Well, are you going to come to Staten Island and see me play baseball today? Yeah, I guess so. Hey, listen, can we take the ferry? Well, how else are we going to get there? I don't know. Who would have thought it? Just seven short days ago, there I was, an innocent dumbbell kid. Now here I am, able to buy sanitary napkins without flinching. It's gonna be a good game today. I can really feel it. You feel what? Good and sick, and it couldn't all be from the boat. Maybe you're getting your period. Probably. <laughs> hey, look, there's the Statue of Liberty. Oh, yeah. You know, I never noticed it before, but she really looks pregnant. Yeah, she does. Nah, I guess she's just bloated. Yeah. You know, I think I'm qualified now to do a report on menstruation. It happens to everybody, except men. I would dig it, actually. It's not a great feeling. You can't do nothing with your period. I think what caused the change in attitude is sort of, uh, a lot of uh, what you might call women's lips, although I'm not one of the, uh, uh, I, I'm not a member and I'm not militant about it, but the whole attitude toward it has changed. I used to use this as an excuse until I realized it wasn't a valid excuse and that there was no reason for it to bother me. And I started doing all the things like going swimming and so on. I realized nothing happens, I took a bath, even had intercourse and it doesn't, nothing bad happened and so as a result of trying all these things and becoming more free in my own attitude towards it, now it doesn't bother me at all. This is Johnny Stanton from the Staten Island Ferry. Judy?